Statistics and Excel Roulette Probability Example Part Number 4 Get ready and some coffee because it's time to get realistic with Statistics and Excel. Here we are. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point, building the tables as we go from here, or possibly just look at this from a theory standpoint about probability statistics or the roulette wheel odds if you do have access to this workbook three tabs down below example practice blank example in essence answer key practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less excel formatting the blank tab is where we started from a blank worksheet and we'll be continuing on with the blank part of the worksheet practicing our Excel formatting as we build our worksheet. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we have done and what we will be doing. We are looking, of course, at the roulette wheel. We're doing the games of chance because the games of chance are basically built on the concepts of probability, which is our point of focus. Once we understand probability well, then we can apply them to many different areas more broadly in statistics. So whether you like the idea of looking at a roulette wheel or you dislike the, the, the idea of being in a casino or something like that, remember you're looking at this in terms of the math, the beauty of the math right now that can be applied here to games or it can be applied to other areas as well as we'll do in future presentations. As we've seen in the past, we have our roulette table, which you can look up online and get a picture of the American roulette wheel if you so choose. And there's many different things that we can be betting on, but we can break down the odds of each of them in essence one by one because they're basically independent from each other. We did that by first listing out the number of options on the wheel. Note that there's going to be 36 actual numbers, but then you've got the zero and the double zero. So if we're actually going to name all the numbers, it's one through 36 plus two more, the zero and the double zero. So there's 38. So that means that if we're looking one at the red or black, which you can also think of in terms of even or odd, because you have the same kind of calculations, then we want to think about the expected value. The expected value have two things involved. One is going to be the payout situation, and the second is going to be the probability calculation. So in this case, we're looking at the pain of the $1, and if it was red or black, you get uh, you win a dollar, or if you lose a dollar, that's going to be the odds that come up. Now, you would think that one be, would be similar to a coin flip, if the wheel had an even number of red and black but obviously it does not because of the zero and the double zero being green not red or black so you have 18 out of 38 versus 20 out of 38. if we combine those two things together the payout and the probability that's what gives us our expected value which is an average over a long period of time if we were to do this repeatedly over a long period of time of 0.0526 of a dollar or 5.26 uh, cents is the average loss we would have. Obviously, we don't lose that every time we roll the wheel. We can't possibly lose 5.26 cents if we bet a dollar, right? That's the average 
over the whole over a long period of time if we were to bet a whole bunch of times we then did a similar analysis if we bet on the first 12 numbers which this time pays out two to one so now they give you two dollars if you put your one dollar down and you still only lose a dollar if you lose so you would think that might be favorable but no it's not favorable because of course when we think about the odds we only have 12 out of 38 which is 31.5 percent chance of winning versus losing 26 out of 38 which is a 68 percent chance so if we look at the payout versus times the odds taking both into consideration our long-term expectation if we repeated this game over and over again is once again uh, 0.0562 of a dollar or 5.26 cents same thing we did with the betting on one number if you bet on one number the payout is much better 35 to 1 so that looks favorable but obviously it's not favorable because it's quite unlikely that you're gonna hit the one number it's one out of 38 chances versus 37 out of 38 that you don't hit it and if we take those into consideration once again if we played this over and over again we would expect the average to be going towards this 0.0562 so let's do one more here and say, okay, what if we got a little bit more complicated and we're gonna say, what's the expected value to win two times betting on red? So now we're gonna bet on red basically two times. That's gonna be the strategy that we have preconceived no matter what the outcome is of the first bet. And we'll break that one down. Once we get our expected value calculations, we will then in future presentations try to test them empirically using random generation tools in excel look at some graphs and these tools can also possibly be used to kind of construct your own uh basically games and whatnot but we'll try to basically break down what is happening the practice tab you will recall has pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less excel formatting let's go to the blank tab where we have started working on this and now i'm going to go into the right to the blank part of the blank tab where we're going to continue on in the double a area let's make the double a skinny we're going to go to the v column select that home tab and format painter and paint that down on the skinny aa make sure i didn't make i didn't mess anything up that looks good all right so now we're going to say this one's going to be the expected value to win two times betting on red so we came up with a strategy that we're, no matter what happens we're going to bet on red twice. So let's select all of these home tab, font group, and black and white. So remember the red and black, we, we have to, you could choose either one of them. We have basically, that's the one where, of course, it's similar to betting on even or odds, meaning half of the numbers are red, half are black, except you have these other two numbers that are green which is resulting in it not being a purely 50 50 chance because of course it's going to be slightly favored in the casino's favor because that's how the casino earns their money on this particular game because they're not taking a cut of like a pie or something like that as they would in a game where you're betting against other people such as uh, a card uh, uh poker or something like that all right so the payout we'll just recap the payout the payout per per game that we play we're going to do it twice this time each time i'm going to say uh black and white we have the pay pay out which is one to negative one so we put our one dollar down and by the way of course you can change these numbers to like you know 10 if you if you said that you're going to say uh 10 then you, you it would be one to one odds so ten dollars if you win and then negative 10 if you lose so i'm just going to keep it at one because that's going to be the simplest way to to first see it so if i win then you can put it this way you get a one and if we lose loss or lose or whatever you're going to have a negative one all right let's make that blue and bordered so i'm going to select these items home tab font group as is our custom with the formula bordering it putting the blue down on it if you don't have that blue it's in the more colors standard color wheel blue there it is the excel is fun guy blue all right so then we're gonna say okay so let's look at the 
odds for the first one. So these are independent rules. One does not depend on the other. And this is another key concept that really, uh, you hear it all the time, but our intuition so wants to, to think that there's some kind of relationship between the first rule and the second rule. So for example, sometimes the roulette wheels will actually show how many times red has come up or how many times an even number has come up. And they'll actually show you that. And the tendency is to say, hey, look, uh, a black is due or an odd number is due at this point in time. And it's and no matter how many times we hear the convention that each role is independent, not dependent on the prior role, it's really hard for us to conceptually see that given the fact that you have a 50-50 chance. And it's like, well, there's been 10 reds in a row. You would think that the next one has to be black, right? It has to be. There's been 10 reds in a row or there's been 10 blacks in a row. The next one, right? You would think that would be the case. But if you run the experiment, you can actually run an experiment on that and say, okay, let me let me run a bunch of random examples that have 11 lists long. And every time that I have a, 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 a string of 10 in a row, let me see what happened on the 11th roll. And if you run that experiment, you'll still see the one that happens on the 11th roll is basically random if you, if you go to a, a long term of numbers. So it, which is, again, it's still kind of hard to wrap our minds around that. And, and, uh, and again, that's where, of course, statistics uh, gets a little bit complex and we have to do more of a formal thought process because our intuition falls a little short. Home tab, font group, Let's make this black, white, and uh, center it. So then we'll put here, this is going to be red or black. Let's make this a little bit larger. And so we're going we're gonna to imagine one or the other. We'll say we're going to bet on red and we're going to say, all right, what are our chances? Well, there's 36 numbers on the wheel, which half of them are red and black, even though they scattered them around a little bit fun, more of a funny way but half of them are red or black of the actual numbers, not including the zero and the double zero. So if I divide that by two, that's 18. So the total numbers, total numbers on the wheel or the total possibilities are gonna be equal to the 36 numbers on the wheel plus the, the two green ones, which are the zero and the double zero plus two. So that's out of 38. So that means the odds are gonna be here. So what, how, what are the odds of us losing? Well, that's going to be equal. We can say it's 38 numbers on the wheel minus the 18, right? Or I can see, I can calculate it this way. I could say, well, there's going to be 36 numbers divided by two. Half of them are black versus red. Plus there's another, there's another two that are green, right? I can calculate it that way. And the sum of those two should add up to 38. Uh, as we could see here. So then that's going to be out of 38. And then the total is going to be equal to the sum of these two. The denominator is just the 38. And then if we look at it in terms of a percent, we could think of these as division problems. This ratio is 18 divided by 38. Percentify to recognize, home tab, number group, percentify to recognize. And then we're going to say the next one is going to be 20 over 38 and we'll percentify to recognize. And then we'll drag that one to the right. And that's a hundred percent, which could also be calculated as this plus this or the sum of those two percentify to recognize. And so there we have it. Okay. Let's make that black and white selecting these items, home tab, font group, black, and then uh, blue, black and blue. It's black and or no, it's, it's bordered blue, bordered blue. It's not black and blue. Someone beat it up. Someone beat it up. All right. So let's make another skinny column over here and say, let's, let's make a skinny AA and then home tab here. And then we'll make a skinny AF and make that one black again. So we have our line across the top. Okay. So the odds of the second one, which is independent odds of the second spin, I can say this is going to be equal to the win. Let's do it this way and just copy that across. Do, do it. I can copy the formatting. So I'll select this top bit. Let's just select the whole thing and format paint it. 
So I'm going to go to the Home tab, Clipboard, Format to Painter, and Paintbrush that right here. Boom. And so then I'm going to say the red or black is once again. Let's make this one a little bit larger. Bup, bup. It's once uh, again going to be equal to it. It's just the same thing. 18 and 20 over 38 and 38 because these are independent rules. And so if I multiply that out, equals the sum of these two. This is 38. And then that gives us the, uh, the odds, which are going to be equals 18 over 38, equals 20 over 38. I can copy that across. And this one is going to be equal to the sum, equal to the sum of these two. I'm looking, I need to add a decimal on these. Add a decimal so everything matches. Okay, what are the expected values? All right, well, the expected value, each roll, expected value, let's make this black and white. Home tab, font group, black and white. To win, the expected value on the first roll is I'm going to get $1. Let's do it this way, equals the one on the payout. And then I'm going to lose. And then, I'm sorry, the, the, the chances are 37, 47, 37. Percent defined to recognize, percent adding some decimals, multiplying that out, $1 times the 47 37 percent and let's add some decimals do 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 and then we're going to say for the loss is going to be negative one i'm going to say equals to that negative one the odds of that happening we calculated to be this 52 63 percent percentify to recognize adding some decimals and then we'll say this equals the one dollar negative times the 5263 adding some decimals so there is that one so that gives us our expected value summing this up equals the sum duh, duh, as we calculated before is going to be that uh, 0.0562 so if i select that we're going to say home tab uh, font group making that blue and bordered. Now, now we could look at it this way. What if I, what if I did this two times? So the number of spins is now going to be two spins. If that's if that's the expected value per spin, what if I did it twice? Well, then of course the the uh, expected value after two spins would be equal to this times two adding some duh, 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 decimals there we have it now note this makes sense but it also is counterintuitive to some degree because when we're thinking about two rules remember we're still kind of averaging this as though you did two rules you played this game out two rules, but we did it infinite like a bunch of times so that the average of you having two rules and betting one or the other, right, would be losing on average uh, $0.1053 or 10.53 cents. Obviously, again, you can't lose 10 cents after two rules, right, because I there's only... Either it's going to come out red, or it's going to come out. Uh, either it's going to come out red, red, or it's going to come out black, black, or it's come, going to come out red, black, in some combination, right? Uh, but if you repeated that over and over, ruled two rules, and repeated it over and over, we're thinking that that's one way we can think of the expected value. We we're losing on average 5.26 cents per spin. They're independent from each other. Therefore, on on average, two spins would lose us on average the point uh, one zero five three, right? So let's the other way we can see that. Let's try to calculate that a different way. 
I'm going to go let's say, let's say we calculate it uh, this way. So I said the odds on the second one, let's just copy the format in here. I'm going to home tab clipboard format paint that over here. Let's say this is going to equal this. And I can say, of course, once again, on the second one, the wins, the loss, the expected value is going to be the same one negative one. This is going to be the 47 37. This is the 52 63 multiplying that out one times this this equals one times this or negative one times that this is the sum of those two which is the same of course because the two spins are uh are independent so we can once again just say well i can think about it this way if i took the expected value of these two that i just calculated out it's obviously once again we would lose 0 0.0562 on the first spin on average and 0 0.0562 on the second spin on average. So you would expect on average after two spins, we would have lost 10.53 uh, cents is gonna be the general idea. Okay, now let's think of it on one more, another way we can calculate this just to kind of wrap our minds around this. And later we'll try to test this kind of empirically by running tests and think about how we can run the tests in Excel. So. Let's select another column here to make another skinny column. I'm gonna put my cursor on the home tab and paintbrush, put that on the AK. So now we have a skinny AK. We've got a skinny AK over here. And we're gonna say that then the, the let's calculate the odds for, these are our odds to win both, or we can lose both, right? we can win one and we have the the total so in other words if we think of this in terms of two spins what could happen on the two spins one well if we're betting on red both times we can have two reds come up and we win both times or two we can we can lose both of them black comes up two times and we we lose both times or we can win one and we can lose one, right? And it might happen that we win the first one, lose the second one, or we lose the first one and win the second one, but the outcome is basically the same for both of those scenarios, right? So I can say, all right, well, let's, let's make this black and white. We're gonna go home tab font group. Let's make this uh, black and white. And then I'm gonna center this bottom one and we can say, okay, so, so to win, to win both, we're going to say, what's the odds of that? Well, we can say this is going to be equal to this odds of winning the first one, the 47, 37 times the odds of winning the second one, 47, uh, 37. Let's percentify that. We're going to go to the home tab, uh, number group, percentify, add some decimals. Well, what about losing both of them? Well, the odds of losing both of them is equal to the 5263 times the 5263, right? That's the odds that, uh, that we lose both of them. Let's percentify that number group, percentify, add some decimals. But that's not the only two outcomes. Obviously, per roll, that's the only two outcomes we have, right? If we only had two rolls, we can only win. I mean, if we only had one roll, we can only win or lose. We only have two outcomes. But if we're rolling two times, like we said, we can either win both, we can lose both, or we can win one and lose one. So what's the probability of us winning one or losing one? Well, I could say, well, that's the, the plug. So I could say this would be equal one minus the sum of uh, these two. And I would come out to a percent, du, du, du. but that's not as fulfilling. It doesn't give me like that internal control check that I would like to see to be able to calculate that. So if I could calculate it, it would be nice. Well, uh, what would what would that be then? That would be then equal to I could either win the first one. What's the odds of winning the first one, and then times losing the second one, 
So I, I win the first one times the odds of losing the second one. Uh, and let's, or I could say plus the odds, the other way that can happen is I lose the first one at this and times the odds of me winning the second one. Those are the two ways that 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 last scenario could happen. I win one. How do I how do I win only one out of the two? Well, I could win one. The win the probability of winning one uh, times the probability of losing the second one, or I can have the probability of losing the first one and winning the second one. So then I can calculate it. I, I come up to this number and now I can kind of double check it and be a little bit more confident about my total over here because I didn't just throw in a plug and I can say, all right, the sum of those three should come out to one to do percent to do hundred percent. So we have, that looks like the, the odds look to be good. We can now empirically test that possibly with Excel and see if those odds do work out and we'll, we'll possibly take a look at that later to get a better grasp of this. But if I go to the font group, let's make that blue and then bordered. So now let's calculate the expected value based on that information. So I'll make this uh, black and white font group. Let's make it black and white. And so we can say, if we, if we win uh, both, we win both of them, then what's going to be the expected what's going to be the return it's going to be equal to one payout that we get each time times two right so we get two dollars if we win both of them what's the what's the probability well we can't we thought the probability came out to 22.44 percent so if we percentify to recognize home tap percentify adding some decibel so if we win both of them we're going to get $2 uh, times the likelihood of that happening, 22.44%. Let's add, uh, let's add some decimals there. Do, 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 do. And, then, and then what if we lose both? So if we lose both, we're going to lose, of course, $1 each time. So $1 times two times, we're going to lose $2. What's the probability of us losing both of them? That's going to be equal to the 2770, percentifying that, percentify, adding some decimals, multiplying that out, two times that. That's going to give us adding some decimals, point, let's add a couple more, 0. 0.5540. And then we could, we could win, uh, win one. Let's just call it win one. We'll be positive about it. We're not going to call it lose one. We're going to say it's win one. So what's going to happen then? Well, we're going to get $1 and then we're going to lose $1, which means we, we're going to get zero on the payout, right? We're going to break even. What's the probability of that happening? Well, it's 49.86%. Uh, Adding, making that a percent, da -da, we can multiply that out, which will of course come out to zero, zero times 49. Adding some decimals, da -da -da -da. And so that's going to give us our expected value, which if I sum up this outer column is going to be adding some decimals. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Reveal. It's going to be once again, that, that 10.53. So that's just another way that we can see it, right? We, we calculated the, all the options, different options of the two. We can, we can think about it that way. But we can also think that these are independent rules. Therefore, if, I, if I'm going to lose 5.26 cents on average per rule, on average, every two rules, you would expect me to lose you know, 10.53 cents and so on. So we'll, we'll actually run, this, uh, run scenarios on this in Excel to kind of test this out because, again, it makes a lot of sense to on one when you look at it, but then it also kind of is kind of mind boggling because again, you're not actually losing five cents in any one role. It would be the average of playing two roles over and over again to, to lose, you know, the 10 cents on average after two rules, which is the same because they're independent as five cents about per rule, you know, uh, uh, for each individual rule. All right. So let's make this, uh, bordered and blue 
So given this information, uh, we can also think about the the losses uh, losses. Let's call it down here per bet per bet. So and let's say so if we bet like ten dollars or a hundred dollars or one thousand dollars, then we can think of what are going to be my losses there. I've been using one dollar here as a bet. So if I go to the font group and we make this black and white, we can we can say that uh, the expected value expected value per bet we have determined to be this 0.0562, right? So that's going to be per bet, the expected value, adding some decimals. We can copy that across, or like we can't copy it across. We can say equals the one above it or one before it. And so the expected value, expected value, if we bet something other than a dollar, of course, will simply be if I bet $10, it would be $10 times the 0 0.0526, uh, adding some decimals. So the expected loss, 0 uh, 0.53, let's add. Uh, hold on a second, what did I do here? Uh, yeah, and then if I said, if I, if I said $100, it's gonna be equal to this times this. Let's add some decimals, duh, 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 duh. And then if it was $1,000, it's going to be this times this. So $53. Now, obviously, I, if you bet $10, you're not going to lose 50 cents, 52 cents. You're going to lose either you're going to win $10 or you're going to lose uh, $10. But if you repeated it over multiple times, you would expect on average, and you did $10 bets, to be losing 52 cents on average if you did it a whole bunch of times. If you bet $100 per time, then of course we would expect on average to lose $5.26. And we can see that here if we if we changed our, our payout matrix over here. And if I said like we're betting $10, uh, then, then, and we change this one to uh, negative $10, and this one will, well, will be $10. So then we, so then we get, you can see here that we get this uh, 5.263 and so on, and uh, and that's going to be the idea. If we change this to 100, du, 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 then you could, you can, you, if you get your Excel worksheet populated properly, then you can change your your betting up here uh, if you so choose. But that's the idea. I'm going to put it back to one. I'm going to make this uh, black, uh, blue and bordered font group blue and then bordered. And so then, so so later, so now next what we'll do is we'll take some of these things that we have we have predicted and say, does that really work? Let's run, let's use Excel to, to do a bunch of simulations and say, and get a better intuition in more of an empirical way about some of the results that we have come up with here. That's what we'll do next time.